Hello everyone, welcome back to a different location. And now here we're actually in my office space. This is where I do my non-photography stuff. I'm still doing some science stuff on the side. But we're gonna talk about five tools that I use to upgrade my video production gear in preparation for 2023. Updated, refreshed, brand new. Now on top of that, a super, super awesome bonus is that all these things can upgrade your gear for less than $30. So it's gonna be amazing. Tons of ways to use these creative items, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Now sometimes when I'm in my studio space, I kinda wanna step away for a second or take meeting calls, kinda just refresh, do my science work. I'll actually go here, which is where I moved my desk from the last video talking all about stations. Now this is the FlexiSpot Standing Desk Pro Plus E7, and they're having a brand new New Year's deal and sale for this desk. Aside from work, which we all use them for, they can also be used for filming too because it's really good to get a height adjustable desk in general because if you have like a top-down setup, you can always adjust this instead of fixing your C-stand and it gets really, really messy if you ever have messed around with the C-stand for fixing the height and stuff. So pushing one button makes it pretty easy for any height adjustable desk. Height adjustable desks are always flexible to film on anyway because then as you're adjusting the height, you can program them. Like this one has like an LCD screen which you can use to program up and down. And as you're doing that, you can take the camera and then film it as it goes up and down. You can basically achieve this pretty cool parallax effect. Now obviously there are way more practical things that you can use a desk for, but I just wanted to share a quick tip or two. So if you're in the market for a brand new standing desk, then go ahead and check out the links down below for FlexiSpot's new year deals. And with that, thank you so much to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video and supporting my channel yet once again. I'll see you all back in the main studio. And we're back in the studio. So for all of these products, the common issue that they address is that when we film these board game components, they're always flat. Right, that's like a huge issue when you're filming because when you film things that are flat, they're, they kind of look boring. They look boring very, very often, even though that's how they are naturally supposed to be laid out. So what we can do to literally lift them up, right, uh, raise them up a little bit and make them look better is to use things that elevate these products. And what, that's what all these products have in common. Now I also will tell you which ones I'm experimenting with currently and which ones I've actually used on client shoots. So starting off with number one, you might've seen this from the Terracotta Army Review. This is a acrylic leveled riser. I don't know what it's called, but I will leave links to all this down below. Either way, they are little platforms of acrylic that are composed in a really cool hexagonal way, just like a little hexagon map tile. That's exactly what they look like. But this one really excels in showcasing miniatures because you can show them off at different levels. They're raised across them. And you can also use these poles interchangeably. This is how I currently have them laid out. I like this little tier system going from low to mid to a little higher mid and then high. I wouldn't really use this for cards necessarily because the cards are you know, the standard size card would kind of get in the way of other ones. Unless they are like thin cards or mini cards, like ones from Viticulture, first one that comes to my mind, then those would be okay to showcase across them. But I would solely use this for miniatures. You can even add some fairy lights to give more depth, more light, more accents to the bottom of these pillars, and they will look stunning for filming board game components. Okay, so that one is number one, the tiered riser. Number two, another one that I've been playing around with a lot lately, something I, I don't do as often anymore, but I will be using for just very, very specific projects that I have currently. I don't currently do product photography anymore, but this one is excellent at showcasing product photography. So if you have like a nice clean background and you do a lot of pictures or you like very, very clean photos, you might often see these foam blocks being used for like watches, jewelry, but I have never seen anyone use this in the board game niche just yet. What I really like about these blocks is that they really do blend in with the background. They're not the first thing you notice because they're colorless. Keep them white, keep them black, and they look very, very professional. You can use them for practically any component. The first one I think of are like resources. I think these will look really, really good. With these foam blocks, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some of them much bigger than others. Some of them just circles. I actually think I'm leaning towards like the rectangular and the square ones a lot more than these kind of crazy shapes that I have here. Overall, the main things I would use this for is to blend into your background. So if you use a black background, then use black foam. If you use a white background, then use white foam because again, you want them to be subtle and you want the highlights to be the components, which will likely be very, very colorful. And again, this will also be very, very good for any kind of product photography type work. Just found more on the packaging, but like this, see like this is more up my alley. I like simple squares and shapes like that, more more sharp corners for sure. So number two are the foam blocks. Now, 
Moving on to ones that I have used for actual client videos. This next one, you might have seen in my video from Unfair, that was the first time I used this, and this is an acrylic desktop stand. Typically, people use this to put monitors on top when they have like a desk, they have a desk set up, they have like a laptop over here, and then a monitor stand or something over here, or maybe even their laptop here. But this one is freaking amazing for videos, photos, things where you wanna kinda of see through the platform and it just gives you so much more flexibility when you are filming with this, um, with this clear acrylic. One of my favorite shots to do with this acrylic stand is a focus shift shot where I'll have components up top here. You'll see exactly how they're used when you see my Andromeda's Edge video that is dropping in a few weeks. But from Unfair, you'll see how I put cars on top and then I'll put like cars on the bottom. Like for instance, let's say I'm talking about Canvas and in that game, I have some transparent cards that I can put on the bottom here. And then when you gain different resources that are listed on the card, you can also zoom up top to gain those little medallions, little tokens. So whatever the card is referencing to, you can put up top and then focus shift to the card, detailing exactly what that is on the bottom. Just as one specific example, this is really good for contrasting because if you wanna talk about a specific component on the, on the top and then you layer it to the bottom, which is related to the top component, then this desktop riser is perfect for shots like that. It's also pretty big too. I highly recommend getting a bigger sized platform. That way when you shoot, you don't really see the edges of this acrylic frame and you really wanna get close to it. Um, it helps using a macro lens for this, like a 100 millimeter macro is what I use for shots like this. So yeah, that's number three, a desktop riser. Now, speaking of acrylic, I have one more acrylic to show you. Out of all the things I'm showing you today, I think this one is not only my most used, but definitely my favorite among everything. And you might have seen my shorts on this, but this is a riser, a clear acrylic riser, perfect for showcasing the most common board game component, cards. Now cards, I think, are the most difficult things to show because they're always flat. And if they're not flat, then you're using little things like this, right? So these are the little houses from Santorini. And typically I'll put cards in front of this. As you might've seen, I've talked about this a million times on my channel, but I use them to hold up cards. And the issue for this is that you can see the back. And when you see the back of the card and it shows this, that's a problem because that's not, it doesn't look professional, it doesn't look good. You don't wanna see the prop that's holding up the component that you're trying to showcase. With an acrylic riser, it doesn't matter what you see behind it because it's just clear. Um, the second issue with this is that when you are showing cards and you show like a display of them, it doesn't show all of them at once and you kind of just get a little bit of each card even if you juxtapose them in a diagonal. Here, you can see tier upon tier upon tier upon tier. It's not the best place to showcase cards on top because they fall and they're not made for like holding up taller cards because it's like, what, like an inch? Not even an inch maybe on the very top. But these, at least, you can use to showcase cards. I put them up top anyway, and just put tape behind them. It is very hard to find a product that will show tiers of cards, and you can show rows upon rows of them, and it looks so good, and it shows all of them at once. I think that's like my biggest highlight of that, is that it can really represent a lot of cards at once. It's clear, so it's, again, subtle. And on top of that, because it's so tall, you can also wrap different lights around it. You'll see exactly how that plays out in my Andromeda's Edge video. Again, coming out very soon, but, but yeah, I like to wrap fairy lights around the pillars here too, kind of stuff them behind here so you get nice little starry bokeh in the back and it looks freaking amazing. I love, love this riser. I actually got another one too, just, so that way I can show two at the same time. So I have like the box in the middle and then riser on this side, riser on this side for card heavy games. Okay, so that one is the riser. Oh, by the way, it's not just good for cards only. They're really great for anything else, but I use them mostly for cards because of the, the height specifically. You can easily use this for miniatures, but I think miniatures don't stand out as much just because they kind of, well, most miniatures are usually like a little bit shorter than the height of these ladders. So that's why I like using this specifically for cards. That is number four. Okay, now these have been super, super fun to experiment with. I've saved maybe the best for last because these, um, have turned out to be much better and much cooler than I anticipated. When I saw them initially, it was kind of like, eh, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't, but it looks really, really good. So these right here are light blocks. How these work is that they attach to a USB and then there's a little switch here. So there's this first one is different from this other one I'm gonna show you, but this first one just has one button and that one button is just a warm streak of light. So this is amazing. Why, Tim? Why is just a simple block of wood with the LED strip in the middle, so amazing. Wow, that's because when you put products 
on top of this, when you put miniatures, especially, they look so cool. Like if you've ever been to, uh, you've ever walked into like a shoe store, athletic store, the first one I think of is like Dick's Sporting Goods or like Nike. They usually will have like these product showcases where they have like light boxes and then they have a shirt or a shoe and there's just a light rim around them. I've always been looking for something that can be used for much a much smaller scale uh, for board games, obviously. And this is the closest thing I've found to it so far until I find a glass one, but the wood one looks really nice. It just looks very homey. And I love this LED strip kind of showing off the middle because then you can really get a nice glow emanating from each component that you put on top of it. It also looks really cool for cards too. So I really wish though that they had longer blocks of this. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, if, I, if I look a little bit harder, they'll have maybe longer strips of this. This is like six inches maybe, a little bit too short, but great if you're doing like one, two, three, maybe you can fit four to five miniatures here. Also, the second block is similar, but it has a little more functionality to it. And they come in like a four pack. I wish they included just like four of these actually. Okay, now this one is a color light. So let me turn that one off real quick. So this one, you can switch through red, blue, green, not the entire spectrum. It has magenta, teal, uh, yellow, white. This is my favorite setting because again, I like to stick with neutral colors unless I'm specifically accenting a piece. Like if I'm talking about a red piece, then I'll use like a red light. If I'm talking about a green piece, green cards, then I'll use the green light. But for most cases, I'll use this neutral white light. Again, looks very, very dreamy. I love it. And you can also turn on and turn off the intensity of the light too, which is very, very helpful because then you don't want to expose the setting in your camera. So you can always dim this and then you can always brighten it too. And yeah, these are the amazing light blocks that I've been using uh, for, for Andromeda's Edge, just like a lot of other things here. So with that said, let me know in the comments below which ones have been of interest to you, which ones you think you might pick up too. These are gonna be super fun to play with this year in 2023. You'll see them pop up in my videos quite often. And yeah, thanks for sticking around, hanging out, and I will see you all in the next one.